So uh, what do you do to minimize ego backlash and how do you deal with it? Well, firstly, you just expect it. You want to understand your mind as this harmonic oscillator. And you want to appreciate the homeostatic forces which are keeping you alive. So it's not that your mind is evil uh, or bad in, in kind of pulling you back. Your mind is just very safety and survival oriented. And it has to be to keep you alive. And you know, sometimes you can really appreciate the power of homeostasis and the value of it. Like, when, for example, when you have a terrible psychedelic trip, a really bad one, like a really gnarly one that scares the shit out of you. But then you're thankful the next day because your mind brings you back, brings you back to normal. Within a week, you're back to normal. You forget about the trip. It's out of your mind and you're just back to normal. And you're thankful for that because you don't want to be stuck in that horrible state of madness that you were in when you're on one of these very deep psychedelic bad trips. So um, you can appreciate that. See, there homeostasis is working in your favor. It's making sure you don't go crazy because um, if it was that easy to shift your mind, you could easily like take a psychedelic, shift your mind into total madness and then, uh, and then stay that way for the rest of your life. Now, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? So... The homeostasis is there to protect you. Now, of course, just like an overprotective mother or father, the effect on the child can be very damaging, even though the intention is good. And that is sort of what happens, is that um, all these survival mechanisms that we built when we were a child and early adults, uh, they turn out to be not as necessary as we thought they were especially after, you know, we've kind of outgrown uh, those various risks and dangers that we faced. Now we don't face them anymore. But those habits that we created in order to solve those issues are still there. And they're still running our lives. So very importantly, just expect that ego backlash will happen. Any significant change generally comes with suffering. Um, it's going to come with fear. It's going to come with various emotions that come up. So when this stuff does happen, if you're making a big change in your life, start to label it. Explicitly call it out as an ego backlash. So when it's happening to you, you can just say to yourself, oh, oh yeah, that's the ego backlash that Leo was talking about. Oh yeah, there it is. That helps you to get some distance from it so you're not totally sucked in and absorbed to it. Uh, the next step is to observe it as mindfully as possible. And this is where it helps for you to have a meditation habit and to do these various kinds of retreats that I'm talking about or to do psychedelics. All of these develop more mindfulness within you. So if you have some mindfulness skills that you've hopefully built up already, then you want to apply those in your moment of sadness, depression, uh, fear, and general contraction. So generally what happens is the ego contracts. So as the ego contracts, the more mindfulness you have, the more easily you can observe the contraction without getting sucked into the contraction and acting from the contraction. And very importantly, at this point, if you're mindful enough, you want to remind yourself not to make any kind of drastic major life decisions in this state of contraction. Because you could easily make some kind of foolish, rash decision like, I'm leaving my family or I'm I'm divorcing my spouse, or I'm quitting my job, or you could even get to the point where you say, I'm, I'm killing myself. Be very careful about that, because this can be dangerous. You want to make sure that you don't make any kind of major life decisions when you're feeling negative, when you're feeling crippled by fear, anger, sadness, or anything like this when you're feeling very disempowered, when you're feeling like a victim, and all of this will happen to you, right? That's, that's what makes the ego backlash so difficult is that it's got so much emotional charge to it that it just kind of like sucks you and sweeps you away and you're not able to like think clearly. All of your lofty high ideals, all of the, the reasons that you were pursuing enlightenment and spirituality and the reason you were pursuing self-actualization, the good person you were trying to become, all the love and the beauty of life, all of that gets stripped away from you in this moment of ego backlash. You don't have it. 
you're feeling very negative. At that moment, it's going to feel to you like there's no hope. Your life is going to be terrible and that spirituality will never work for you and you'll never get enlightened and you'll never be able to, to change your diet and you'll never be able to find a good job and, and you'll never be able to, to get a good girlfriend or a good boyfriend. You know, you're going to feel very negative. And uh, you want to make sure to remind yourself not to make any major life decisions at that point. Just mindfully observe the suffering. I have an episode called How to Deal with Strong Negative Emotions. That's a very important episode for when you're in this, the, the, the sort of the depth of the ego backlash so that you can just kind of suffer it mindfully and let that suffering actually purify you and grow you. And so there's sort of a silver lining to these ego backlashes. In a sense, it's terrible because you're like at the worst that you would feel in your life during these moments. And uh, it also feels like you're not making any progress. But at the same time, if you're able to suffer it mindfully, that suffering will purify you. And in that, you will actually make your greatest progress. So this is another one of those very counterintuitive uh, things, these things that kind of go full circle. It's precisely when you're backsliding that you have the opportunity to learn the most about yourself and to grow the most. But it's also precisely because of that that it's the most difficult for you to remain mindful during that moment and to maintain all of your good habits. And that's another way to deal with ego backlash is as much as you can, try to maintain your positive habits even if you don't feel like it. So if you're in the midst of an ego backlash, you probably won't want to meditate that day. You'll want to skip it. You probably won't want to observe your diet that day. You'll want to go splurge on some cheesecake. And you probably um, won't want to be nice to your children or to your friends or to your family members. Uh, push yourself just to be nice anyways. Like today, I really didn't want to shoot this video. Like I was really debating about whether I should shoot it or not. I felt like procrastinating it. Um, and I just kind of went through the motions. And then, you know, by the time that I turned on the camera, um, it's really not much different than any other day. The next thing to remember when dealing with an ego backlash is to not get discouraged by it. Frame it in a positive way. Frame it as though this is growth. This is part of the growth process. What's really important is to stop thinking of growth as a straight, constantly upwards moving line on a graph. That's not what your spiritual growth or your self-actualization growth will look like. It will look with like, you know, jagged sawtooth kind of pattern with lots of ups and downs and sometimes big spikes downward. And usually it's when you get the, your biggest spike downward that then you get your biggest spike upward as well. So the way that I try to reframe it in my mind whenever I'm having this emotional upheaval or I'm feeling um, like I'm regressing is just that this is the path. This is the growth. I'm growing right now as I'm doing this, as I'm suffering through this, this is the growth. That's a really important reframe. And also how you deal with it is that you stop expecting quick fixes and easy one-time solutions. Almost never in your life will there be just one thing that will just come in there and resolve all your stuff for you. It just doesn't work that way. So make sure you get your expectations right. 